this is Jessica. And this is Robert. With Exploring the Local Life. Today we're going to be talking about our love-hate relationship with RV parks. Yeah. This episode of Exploring the Local Life is brought to you by RVWithMe.com. They connect RVers and landowners. RV owners can enter their desired destination and a list of nearby locations will appear. Landowners or RV park owners can list their sites and have RVers find them. That's RVWithMe.com. So we were going to start talking about the things that we hate, and then we thought we'd go into the things that we love about us so we could end on a positive note. Yeah. Number one. Number one. Why do they have to be so close? Yeah, so many RV parks that you go to are like stacked up one next to the next, next to the next, next to the next. Especially the ones, the ones that are really bad are the ones that are like in a row. So no matter what one window, unless you have one in the front or the back, if you're looking out your side windows, you get to look right into your neighbor's RV. Yeah, so, you know, I personally don't want to see every time that my neighbor opens their front door that I get to see inside. We've been pretty fortunate that uh, we've been able to find a couple parks that we've, you know, we are not lined up row by row by row. They're at least staggered. Staggered. <laughs> staggered. You're not directly looking into anybody else's window. Mm -hmm. So one of the things, if you're just looking, you know, use Google Earth and check out that RV park. You know, is it something that is going to uh, be a problem for you? Or is it, even if it is stacked up, are there a lot of trees, or the shrubbery and landscaping that breaks things up, breaks things up? That does make a difference. It does. So that's one thing. So that's one Some thing Some of them are like. just set up, you're packed in like sardines. It's terrible. I mean, I know you want to make some money, you want to be financially whatever, but come on, you want to make it pleasant for everybody? Yeah. Make it pleasant. Pleasant. Number two. They are set up just like neighborhoods. True. I wanted, the, part of the reason we got an RV park was to get out of neighborhoods. Yeah. You know, you, you, we, we have this, this ex expectation that you're going to go out, get an RV, you're going to hook up the travel trailer, and you're going to go out into the wild. And it's going to be wonderful, and there's going to be trees everywhere, you're going to be going hiking and campfires, and uh, not if you're going to an RV park. If you're going to an RV park, you're going to be parked in a specific little paved area, which, I mean, that's nice. But then if you want to actually do anything cool... You gotta still drive there. You have to get in your vehicle and go there. Yeah. Now, unless you're at a state park or a national park that you can get out your door and meet up with a bear, um, uh, you're, you're, gonna, you're gonna be driving to wherever you need to go. You're gonna have to drive to get your supplies. You have to drive to just go walk out in the woods. Um, go to a lake. Um, it, it's often, like a neighborhood, it is remote. Yeah, and it's just a place sort of to like park and, and sleep. And then that's that's sort of it. I mean, you know, some of them do have a lot of amenities. I know you guys are gonna be like, well, they have pools, and some of them have like really great. Like I know that, but you know, I am a person that wants to go hiking. I am a person that wants to hear birds chirping all the time. I want to, you know, I, I don't want to feel like I'm sitting in in an organized neighborhood. I really don't. I, I prefer a more rustic feel, if you will. And again, I, it irritates me that if I want to do something, I have to get in a vehicle and leave. I want to have the ability to go for a hike, um, go out on the lake, do all, not that we have whatever, but still I want to like have those abilities right then and there without having to get in a car. I want to be able to walk everywhere. That's, I just think that that's unfortunate. So I remember we're starting negative. There are things we Oh love. yeah, yeah, don't worry about it. We're, we're gonna get there. I'm getting there. Yeah, we're just, we're just getting, keeping it honest with you. Yes. Number three. Number three. Number three. Number three. Number three. Tres. People walking through your campsite. Or you having to walk through somebody's campsite. Yeah. So, you know, sometimes you have to walk through the periphery of somebody's campsite. You know, sometimes campgrounds aren't exactly, even though they're set up nicely, sometimes you don't find yourself having to walk you know, through somebody, part of somebody's site. You gotta dump your black tank. Whatever, yeah, we get it, we get that. Um, but if I'm standing at my window doing dishes and I look outside and there's somebody walking straight right there in front of, like, through our lawn chairs and <laughs> our stuff and our campfires. It's a little tacky. What is that? I don't get it. And these are adults. These aren't even like kids that maybe just don't know any better or haven't been told by their parent, whatever. 
if it was kids, I get it. You know, they may not know. But these are grown people just walking straight through. And I'm like, what? And occasionally you'll get a cigarette flicked onto your mat. And it burns a hole in it. Awesome. Ha! Ah, so that was, that, was, that was a class act. That was good. That actually happened to us. It was awesome. If you want pictures of the hole, let me know. I'll take a photo for you. Get on you. Patreon. You'll see it there. <laughs> okay, we'll post that. Okay, so on to number four. So a lot of these things that we're discussing are sort of related and they're space related, but number four is, is, is heinous. People parking on your site. Even better, parking behind your vehicle. Bonus. Without asking. If you need, for some reason you're having extra company, something happens and you need the extra space, ask. We'll say, okay, sure. But it's good to know. That's fine. So you can move your truck. Right. Your car, so you can be positioned if you need to go to the store. Yeah, I mean, Something. we actually were getting ready to leave one time, and we look out, and we're like, oh, there's somebody parts behind us. The good thing is, by the time that we did get everybody ready, and we were at, literally walking out the door, they were pulling away. But I mean, yeah, yeah, and you figure once you start at the truck, they're gonna notice. They're gonna notice. They're gonna notice you and me. But yeah, so if you guys RV park etiquette, just general etiquette, would you park in somebody else's driveway? Number five, Wi-Fi. Come to our RV park. We have Wi-Fi. Free, free Wi-Fi. Wi yeah, it's so free you don't even get it. <laughs> I, it's only available like if you are right next to the office. Just don't announce it. You can say like, you know, Wi-Fi available in say in the office. It is really really disappointing. I mean, we are prepared for it. We have our own wireless hotspot that we do have but it's just so annoying to see it on there and we've seen it on almost every single RV park and then you get there limited success and there's nothing <laughs> anyway but that I mean that doesn't necessarily affect us directly so much but it's still it just it's... yeah and Wi-Fi is not that hard get boosters yeah yeah sorry I just don't think you should announce it as one of the awesome amenities of your RV park if it doesn't actually work Okay. All right, so that's all. That's all. Those are the things that we hate. See, it wasn't yeah. too bad. And most that's of those things, bad. you know, go bad. sort of go together. And you can say that, you know, it's our own fault. But, hey. Just just say it. We're sharing how we feel about a certain We thing. have an opinion. And we're sharing it. Yeah. All right, now to the stuff we love. Things we love, yes. Things we love. Before we start the things that we love, we did want to... As hey, you can see, a, we're wearing a, our awesome that is a good Iron These shirt. shirts, exploring the local life shirts. You guys can pick them up at Redbubble. Design, or... Designed by Neil Campbell. Yes, he's awesome. We love him. You can also pick them up by becoming a patron on Patreon. At a certain level, you will get your own free t-shirt. Check it out. Check it out. So, things we love. Number one. Number one. Full hookups. Full hookups are a good thing. Yes, that is water, electric sewer in some cases they even have cable yeah all sorts of things that make um it more uh remember we are living we are not going for the weekend we're not trying to disconnect from everything not saying that we're but this is everyday life yeah. but for us we love 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 having full hookups full it's hookups totally just worth a, yeah. One if, less thing you have to worry about. Yeah. If you're new at RVing, if let's say you're going to launch your first big trip and you think you're going to be able to take care and that, that, that black tank is going to hold 40 gallons, that's going to last, and that gray tank is going to hold... No. No. If this is your first outing, you don't have a lot of experience going out for days at a time, you're going to fill up that gray tank in one day. What? You could do it in, in seven... Oh, well... The gray. You could do seven days yeah, if yeah, you're yeah, not yeah. showering every day and you're not using water like crazy. That is the maximum that we have been able to yeah. go. Yeah, we, we, we've done it seven days and that took some real self-control. That took using paper Lots plates, wipes. napkins, wipes, wipes. Um, and um, and if there was any local bathroom facility using that. Yeah. So yes, full hookups, big plus. If you're new at this and you're considering yeah, it's five bucks more to use the full hookup site versus the non-full hookup site. Get the full hookup get site. Get the full hookup site. Do it. At least Do for it. the first month until you get it, get used to it. Your and wife then... will love you. Number two, uh, going along with everyday amenities, things that you do need to stay happy. For everyday living. We're yeah. Again, we're doing everyday living here. We're not talking about boondocking. We're not doing the big adventure out west. We're not doing any of these weekends, whatever. We are doing everyday living. Yeah. You're going to want to wash your clothes. 
Yes, RV parks have laundry facilities, which is great. Mm -hmm. Now, if you have a big old fifth wheel and you have your washer dryer hookups all ready to go, fantastic. We love you. Let us know how it works for you. But you're going to want laundry facilities that you can just get your stuff, put it together, and go out there and get your stuff done. Yeah, it's nice to just be able to walk and go do that as opposed to... And a lot of times what the... Oh, the kids are jumping around. That's why the cameras... Whatever. Godzilla. A lot of times what we're basically comparing all this to is sort of RV parks versus staying at a state or national park. Some state and national parks do have laundry facilities, <laughs> but not all of them. And they're going to be very probably pricey versus staying in an RV park. Not saying RV park laundry facilities are cheap. Some are. Some are. But, you know, it's nice to be able to go from your RV, take a bag, go and do your laundry real quick and come back. Number three of things that we love. Number three. We love the fact that RV parks have like these cool events like for big holidays. Um, they'll have a big celebration for like the 4th of July. So basically everybody in the RV park gets together, have a cookout, mm -hmm. have music. It's really, really nice. It brings everybody together, as I said. And, and the kids love it. And the kids love it. And we get to meet new people and sort of talk to the other people that already stay there. Yeah, can you shout them? Yes. Mountaindale RV Resorts in Colorado Springs, outside of Colorado Springs. While we were there this summer, they had waffle, waffles on Sunday morning. They had an ice cream uh, social. And the night we got there, we got in a little too late. They had craft beer. Womp womp. We missed that. We missed that. So again, I do not like getting in my vehicle and driving to a thing. So it was great for those special you know, holidays to be able to just walk outside the RV park, go to the little community center, and away we went. Yeah, good stuff. Good stuff. Very good. All right. So, number four, we've number been joined four. by Nadia. But yes. <laughs> number, yeah. So, number four. Can you do number four, Nadia? So, number four is the length of stay. Again, since we are living this life, we do not want to move all the time, every time. Um... National and state parks have limits such as 14 days. 14 days? I don't want to move every two weeks. No. I don't. Do you? No. So most RV parks do not really have a minimum amount of time that you can stay. Yeah. Yeah, no, not every RV park has full month stays available at all times. They segment their their their, part, their, their RV parks into uh, long-term stays and short-term stays. So you do have to call around and you have to call in advance because you don't want it to be the week that you're going to position to a new location and all of a sudden you don't have anywhere to stay except for an expensive nightly uh, location. Right. That's and why. That's right. So length of stays. That's one thing that you should, one thing that you can look into, plan your trip well in advance and uh, you'll get better pricing the longer you stay at a given location. That's right. Some of them have discounted rate if you stay like three months, six months or something like that. We usually don't like to stay more than we do like one month to three months in one spot. We don't usually like to stay less than a month because it gets more expensive. All right. Number five. The fifth thing that we like about RV parks is variety. That's right. What do you want to experience in an RV park? Do you want something basic, something rustic out in the middle of nowhere? Just you, your parking spot and a campfire? You will still be next to your neighbor, though. <laughs> You'll yeah. still be close. Go in the off season or just when it's starting to get cold. <laughs> Sorry, uh, I had to throw that in there. Yeah. Um, but I'm just saying you can go to some places that are pretty simple, yeah. don't have a lot of amenities, or... Other end of the spectrum. There's a lot of resorts out there that are really, really fancy and... Gated entrances with security guards. Yeah, some people, there. I saw a photo of somebody who was like, this is our spot for the week! And they had like a jacuzzi, like, in their site. Good for you. For them just for them with a view of the ocean yeah so so just like um where they want a simpler complex uh the locations can also vary for your rv park uh, you can be out in the country you can be in the city in the suburbs or on the beach so it's really nice to have that ability to move your home and everything that you do from either somewhere rustic or somewhere fancy or somewhere on the beach it's it's great so that's what we wanted to talk about. Those are the five things that we love and hate about RV parks. Yeah, but in the end, we wouldn't trade this lifestyle for anything. This is the right time in our lives to do it. Um, we're trying to live it with the gusto uh, that we have and, and, you know, take the good with the bad. Okay, so thanks guys for sticking with us through this video. We've had a wonderful time trying to uh, keep that at bay.